Hello everyone, Act 17 Apologetics here, Nabil Qureshi, David Wood, and approximately one month ago we uploaded a video of us in Dearborn, Michigan at the Arab Festival. Now, we showed many things at that festival, specifically the response, the violent response from security when I simply asked a question at a Muslim booth. Now, the overwhelming response we received from uploading this video has been positive. People have been congratulating us, thanking us for uploading this video and showing what's happening to people's rights in parts of America. But a few people had some negative things to say about it, and I think that these things arose from misunderstandings about our recording. One of the most common uh, misunderstandings has concerned the nature of the festival. Uh, we've been criticized by, by people saying, uh, well, how would you like it, David and Nabil, if someone came up in the middle of one of your church services and raised this ruckus? Similarly, how could you ever go into the middle of this religious festival, this Muslim festival, and uh, start all these problems. Well, this wasn't a religious festival. We have to point that out. This was an Arab festival. The goal was to get people of all different backgrounds, gather together, uh, eat some falafel, listen to some music, similar to Oktoberfest in Germany, where people get together and get a taste of German culture. So everyone was welcome. This was a public event. It was on a public street, a public sidewalks. Uh, it was open to everyone. There was no admission or anything else. So that was the nature of the festival. It certainly had nothing to do with any sort of religious gathering. I have called it uh, a Muslim festival because Muslims eventually started trying to dominate and persecute uh, other groups. But that was not what this festival was supposed to be. And another thing that people have been bringing up is, well, why did you go in there to cause a problem? It looked like when you went in there you were just causing a fight. Well, that's really not the case. If you see the video that we uploaded before this video, I was simply trying to clear up some misinformation that was being distributed by the Muslims at this festival. Specifically, there was a pamphlet that said Islam is a religion of peace. And going through the pamphlet, it was pulling verses out of context, and it was completely ignoring the verses that showed that Islam is not a religion of peace. So my desire was to clear up some misinformation. And it wasn't just this that was uh, misinforming people. There were other pamphlets there that were uh, confounding issues regarding with the Trinity, um, making the deity of Christ sound like it was something that it's really not meant to be. So people were being misinformed at this convention, this festival, and that's what we're trying to clear up. And th this, it, it is important to, to point out that Nabil and I have a somewhat different focus from that of other Christians. Uh, most Christians who interact with Muslims, their focus is to convert these Muslims. Uh, and the emphasis is always on converting this person. And, you know, these people win lots of converts from Islam uh, every year. Our focus is a bit different. We're focusing on the tens of thousands of people who convert to Islam every year here in America. Every person we, uh, we contact and ask, why did you convert to Islam? Every single person has been given a distorted view of Islam. They've been told uh, Islam supports women's rights and Islam is peaceful and tolerant towards everyone and Islam is, is grounded in scientific evidence we want to address that, and there's no easy way to do it other than walking up to a person and saying, hey, here's what you're saying about Islam. Let's see if what you're saying lines up with the truth. Another very interesting accusation that we've had against us is that we did not have permission to record, that we were forcing the camera into people's faces. Well, this simply wasn't true. Again, if you watch the videos that we uploaded before this video, I went up to record the answer from the man at the booth, and he said, turn the camera off. So I went to turn the camera off. But then he said, no, never mind, come back, let me answer your question. Similarly, the second man I spoke to said, no, you can take the video. Here, how about you take a look at it for yourselves? Turn the camera off, I'll talk to you. So what we see here is that we are told Islam got questions, we got answers, but they do not allow it to be recorded. Is this deception? I give you the answer. What was the question you asked? The question is, this pamphlet are specific questions. Yep. These specific questions are answered by the scholars of Islam. Okay. Now read the first question to me. Read the first question. Well, you read the first question. No. Hold on a second. I'm worried about her. If they're telling you to stop taping, stop taping. Well, she can tape it. Stop but taping. I want you to read it. Oh. If you don't stop the question, stop taping. That's what we So you can see from these video clips that we indeed had permission from the Muslims at the booth to record this peaceful conversation. And the conversation would have proceeded peacefully if it hadn't been for Muslim security guards intervening illegally and stopping two groups of adults from having a conversation that they have every right to hold. They even assaulted our friend Mary Jo Sharp of Confident Christianity, uh, who was doing nothing but recording. 
Uh, this is when things really started to break down. And people have asked us, David and Nabil, why did you take a whole camera crew in there if all you wanted to do was ask a question? Well, fact of the matter is, up until this point, we only had one camera. It was after Mary Jo was assaulted that we went to an off-duty policeman and said, what should we do about this? He said, take multiple cameras with you in case security tries to do anything illegal again. Interestingly, that's exactly what happened. And notice, the issue we have is with the security guards, not with the people at the booth. Yes, when we went back to the booth, they were much more reluctant to answer questions. In fact, they weren't willing to answer the questions at all, and after a while we had to just leave. Uh, things had changed. The people at the booth were influenced by the security guards. But up until then, they were more than willing to ask questions. We had nothing against them. It was against the security guards at this festival that we made this video. So the security guards were openly harassing Christians, persecuting Christians. This brings us to the issue of Sharia in the U.S. People have asked, David and Nabil, why do you call this Sharia? This isn't Sharia. Yes, it is. Read up on your Sharia. Under Sharia law, if you are a Christian, you are not permitted to freely proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, just as we find in Dearborn. Under Sharia law, if you are a Christian or any sort of non-Muslim, you are a second-class citizen, just as we find in Dearborn. In fact, this ruling of Sharia law comes from chapter 9, verse 29 of the Quran. It says, If you believe, fight those who believe not in Allah until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. So it says right there, the very question we asked at the booth shows that people are treated as second-class citizens in Sharia law. Now, one other thing that I want to bring up before we conclude is, a lot of Christians and Muslims have been saying to us, why are you not acting like Jesus? You're not acting very Christ-like. And they have this idea that Jesus was just going around making everyone happy and only preaching a message of love. Wrong! Jesus offended many people. In fact, the very people he offended were those who were teaching false teachings, who were misinforming others. He said they were like the blind leading the blind. He called them whitewashed tombs. He called them a brood of vipers. These were not soft terms. He was offending people, and he was offending them because he was, those people were guiding people to an ignorant belief in falsehood. And that's exactly what we find here. And what did Jesus receive at the end of all this? Were his disciples more than comfortable after Jesus had done this? No! The disciples were in a very uncomfortable position. At the end of Jesus' ministry, after he's been crucified, the disciples are forced into hiding. Not comfortable at all. So what we find in the Gospels is, if you're broken by sin, if you're an outcast of society, Jesus was very nice and loving to you. If you were a false teacher, Jesus was not going to be nice. Mm -hmm. Now, we are called to follow the example of Jesus, but we're also, uh, as Christians, called to follow the example uh, set by the Apostles. And what do we find from the Apostles? Well, our ministry is called Acts 17. I would invite everyone to read the book of Acts, chapter 17. We find many interesting things there. One of the things we find is the Apostle Paul traveling to Thessalonica, preaching the gospel, and people begin converting. Does this make everyone comfortable there? No. What happens? Well, uh, in verse 5 we read, But the Jews, becoming jealous and taking along some wicked men from the marketplace, formed a mob and set the city in an uproar, and attacking the house of Jason, they were seeking to bring them out to the people. When they did not find them, they began dragging Jason and some brethren before the city authorities, shouting, these men who have upset the world have come here also. So uh, people were being attacked because of, because of what Paul was doing. Christians were being attacked. People were in an uproar because of what Paul was doing. And yet people say to us, David, uh, you know, how can you bother people? Uh, David and Nabil, how can you demand your rights as American citizens? Well, if you say that, what do you do with the Apostle Paul? When people were about to hand him over to the Jews, Paul said, I am a Roman citizen. No one has, me, no one has a right to hand me over to them. I appeal to Caesar. What was he saying? He was saying, as a citizen of Rome, I have certain rights that you cannot violate, and my country will protect my rights. This is exactly what uh, Nabil and I are doing. We have every right to ask a question at a booth inviting us to ask questions without being assaulted by security guards. So we demand those rights and our country will defend them. The fact of the matter is, until someone can show us what we're doing, either by the laws of our nation or by the Bible itself, that what we're doing is wrong, we will continue doing it. Dave and I will continue to expose falsehood because we are following the teachings of Jesus Christ and his disciples. We will go and make sure that people who are being misled will hear the truth at least to the best of our ability. This is Act 17 Apologetics.